who are just saying that it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us uh, from sin. Yes. You know, uh, that's, that's one thing. We were in Colossians. Let's go back there for just a second because uh, I know the Lord spoke to, to George once when he was reading this passage here in Colossians in the first chapter. He's, verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? And I, as George was relating how the Lord spoke to him, he said, Back up, because he had already gone on to verse 14, where it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And he said, back up, you missed something. And as he backed up, the Lord said, what, what delivered my people in Israel? And now, Ada, you were just talking about the first Passover. When people, the very first Passover, that was the last of the plagues in Egypt. Yes. You know, uh, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. And uh, there was 10 plagues, 10 plagues. The last of those plagues was the killing of the firstborn. And God spoke to Moses and said, you tell all the families that they're to take a lamb and that they were to sac kill the lamb and apply the blood to the doorpost. Because he, he said that there would be a death angel that would pass over and kill the firstborn and so to protect themselves they had to apply that blood to their doorpost so that's why it's called the Passover so that when I see the blood I'll pass over okay that you will find continuously that it's the blood that delivers people yes. that brings you out, out of, sin. of sin out of sin bondage bondage sin is bondage yes and we're told not to be entangled with it once we're set free um I, I, you think about those people that came out of egypt that they were had their eyes looking backward wanting to go back don't do that that's backsliding that's um that's bad yes okay but when it, it says, and trans, has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, you're going to find that the way you get into the kingdom of God is through the water, water baptism in Jesus' name, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Two elements there. You'll find this in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Verse 3, you can't even see it. And verse 5, you cannot enter without water and spirit. You're going to see in the Gospel of John that you're not born again by blood, it says, but by water and spirit. So, uh, and that's what the scripture says. We have a tendency to lump them all together. Uh, and just think, well, everybody's going to the same place. Please don't be deceived. It's very important that you see these things and say, I want that. I want that. If you have not ever experienced any of these things that I'm talking about, um, whether it's speaking in tongues or one of the spiritual, we are told that we are to covet earnestly. Yes the gifts of the spirit it is if we don't do it they're not going to manifest so have an earnest desire to press in and don't be content uh, i had an email sent to me uh, and it was uh, a man talking about tongues and i could tell by listening to that this message that that man had never experienced tongues mm -hmm. because if he had he would have related his experience right. which he did not and in the book of acts this man actually brought out that this is how they knew people around that these people had received the gift 
of the Holy Spirit heard was because they heard them speak just like the Spirit did in Acts chapter 2. So don't be lazy. Don't be too content where you're at. I want to encourage you. Procrastinate. Right, don't procrastinate. Sometimes people think, well, if the Lord wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. And that's just kind of sitting back saying, I'm going to sit back and say, okay, God, it's up to you. Without really having it a desire, you know, he's really desire looking. Desire will bring you to seeking. That's exactly right. If he you desire you to seek it. for salvation. He says, seek the kingdom. And that's what puts you into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. You can't just sit back and think it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I have been in countless services where people would come down and tarry at the right. altars in the front, just praying and crying out to God. And you don't have to be in a church setting. You can do it in your bedroom. Right. Uh, in your place of prayer, right. wherever. Uh, people have experienced in their cars, their vehicles. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not limited. It might be out in your yard or a place of uh, just a tree stump. Or like your mother had an uh, um, old-fashioned well pump that uh, she sat there, knelt down there. I'm not leaving until I get it. Uh, Praise God. There has to be a determination on your part that you believe it and that you believe it's for yourself that God wants you to have it, yes. and he will not deny you. You will get it. You will get it. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we do live like this. Yeah. Like John 3.16, and the translation is John 3.5. Praise the Lord. I, okay, I'm going to say that again, because I, I don't know whether you heard me on to say that. In John 3.16, that's probably the most uh, remembered or quoted verse in scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that is what delivers you when you believe it and you say oh God I am a sinner I need forgiveness yes. that's, that's that will deliver you blood. what's that that's when the blood blood is that's when the blood is applied okay Hallelujah. translated is the first 14 verses up to verse 14 is it George okay that's what translates you. That's entering into the kingdom is through the water and the spirit. Right. That's what translates you into the kingdom. Praise God. Praise God. You have it. The disciples, Jesus said, your name is written in heaven. But they wouldn't fill with the Holy Ghost. Right. That's right. The Holy Ghost was not given yet. Uh, in the Gospel of John in chapter 7, you're going to find that the Holy Ghost was not given until after Jesus was glorified. And we find that that happened on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully, the day of Pentecost was fully come in Acts chapter 2. That's when the Spirit was poured out. That, that was it. Well, that was the whole idea of Him coming. The people back then before Christ's coming, had days of atonement and sacrificial animals that they could give that allowed them forgiveness and atonement for another year. But they had to repeat this and repeat it. But when Jesus came, he set a new standard. I mean, you come to him now and you don't have to bring a sacrificial lamb. He's the sacrificial lamb. And he will lead us out of sin by his blood. Forgiveness of sin through his blood. George says, I've had two births. One I don't remember and one I can't forget. <laughs> and I think, bottom line, we all need two births. Our first earthly birth was when we was born. That's our birthday, when we was born into this old world. But that second birth is a spiritual birth. And we need that. That's what... The blood pays for forgiveness of our first birth, our firstborn, <laughs> first birth. But water and spirit takes us on into and 
makes us have a second birth. One Praise we won't Lord. forget. Praise the Lord. That is wonderful. Yeah. That's it. That's it. No, it's not. That it's not. It, you know, people sometimes don't distinguish between the two. Right. And so that's, they they were redeemed by what Jesus was fixed to do on the cross, but that didn't put them in the kingdom. Right. The kingdom came at Pentecost. I like in that. I still liken that to the first Passover where Jesus shed his blood or, yeah, where they put the blood over and that loosed them out of bondage but they had to go on to come into the promised land they had to, went through the Red River which was a type of baptism for us today it saves and it delivers and it brings us in to a new spiritual walk exactly that's why I believe there will be Saved, won't be lost. Yeah. The two won't be kingdom people. But his blood was not in vain, so it did do a work. I mean, without the blood, that's we want that first of all, the forgiveness of sins. Praise you God. Know, after, after they got the Holy Ghost, the Feast of Pentecost, they were in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The kingdom that Jesus prophesied to them. It's so important that the last words that he spoke to G, the, the disciples is to tell them to tarry. You know, it says that in Acts chapter 1 that he spent 40 days uh, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And they were told to wait for the promise of the yes. Father, which he saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They were told to tarry in Jerusalem until they would be endued with power from on high. And if they had everything they had needed while he was there with them, he would not have said, tarry until you get it. That's a message to you and I. We're not there with them uh, in that upper room, but we can have an upper room experience. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Sister Ada, why don't you close us tonight in prayer? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We're so thankful, God, for the word of God that sets us free and gives us direction, Lord, and works alongside of your spirit, God. Your word and your spirit agree. They are the same, Lord. We ask you, God, to lead us this rest of this week. Help us to to know which way to go and what to do. Lord, there's so many stressful things pushing us in, calling us to do this and calling us to do that. But Lord, we just ask you, Father, that we would put you first, that you would be our priority. Lord, that we would go to the word for comfort and strength. Keep us protected and bring us back together again, Lord. And we ask you to save our loved ones and save those that don't know about this wonderful salvation, Lord. Lord Deal with their hearts, Lord. God. And we thank you for it, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Amen.